Hi guys, you're back with Juzzy and it's Saturday again. So that means that it's time to do another modification or video in store for the Honda Rebel 500 2022 Special Edition. This is my tweaked Rebel and it's got a whole bunch of modifications and I'm really happy with the bike. But now I've just done a quick, or I shouldn't say quick, it was a 30 minute video showing everything I've done to the bike so far. And uh, yeah, I talked about what my next mods were going to be. And one of those mods that I was always wanting to get because I didn't quite like the appearance of how people sort of sat on the bike. And potentially for people who are quite tall, um, you will know what this is all about. So basically today we're looking at the installation of a Ford controls kit. Now, when I didn't know anything about bikes, I thought, oh, controls, that must be meaning something to do with the handlebars. But no, what it really does mean is it's talking about foot controls. And so you'll see here that when you look at the Honda Rebel, the foot controls are pretty much smack bang in the middle of the bike. And that's because when they make the bike, they obviously are trying to appeal to all sorts of demographics, but one of the important ones is that it's got a low seat height. So it's, it's ideal for shorter people or people who have got shorter legs. And so when you sit on the bike, the feet, uh, your heel rests there and it's very comfortable for a person that is my height, so that's 170 centimeters. But if you're a bit taller than that, then what can end up happening is that your knee sort of cramps up in this position. And ideally what you would like is to have this foot control area sort of a little bit forward like that. So that's what we're going to do today. Now I, I don't have uh, any sorts of cramps in my feet, any sorts of um, uncomfortable riding position. I'm purely just getting this to have a more stretched out uh, leg seating position when I ride the bike. And uh, yeah, I just think that the, the people when they ride the Rebel, it just looks better when their feet are forward. So as you've probably seen on my bike, a lot of this stuff, in fact, all of it is aesthetics and nothing has been done to increase the performance or to change the air filter, anything like that. So I'm coming at this in store with the sort of view that I'm wanting to do it um, primarily for aesthetics. And uh, that's a valid reason, I guess. Um, so it's not a cheap in store. You can get cheap sort of copycat or imitation type versions of all sorts of forward control kits on AliExpress, eBay, etc. But my way of thinking is I wanted to actually have a look at personal reviews. And so I had a look in all the big Facebook groups. I Googled as well and I looked at some videos and there's a range of ones out there, but by far and large, the one that I saw, which had multiple positive feedbacks, um, was the one that comes from a company called Red Dragon. Now, I've said in all my videos that I am an absolute novice at installing uh, bike parts. So if I can do it, anyone can do it. And if you can't do it, then you have a look at YouTube and you find a video which is pretty good at explaining things. And I think that what's unique about my channel is that I am a um, English speaker and I'm bringing these parts to the Western world. I'm not the first person to have done that, but uh, the feedback I've got is that, yes, I sort of talk through it in a granddad sort of style, which is slow and quite repetitive and boring, but I'm doing that so that you've got no doubts about the install and that you're 100% clear on how to get this uh, part installed or all the parts on my bike installed. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It's actually called Juzzy Evo X because a lot of my installs focus on my Lancer Evo. But if you're wanting to find me online and you just click the link in Facebook or whatever, you can search for Tweet Rebel and I'll put those links up on the screen. Now in all of my video installs, I show where I have purchased the parts from. If you click on the description beneath this link, there will be a link to the website, a link to um, Red Dragon's install video. And uh, now I'm just gonna talk about the price. So when I got this shipped, I live in Brisbane, Australia, and these forward controls are shipped out of Vietnam. 
They are shipped by DHL Express and the cost for me was 300 American dollars to get this shipped to me in Australia. Now that might be a little bit cheaper if you live in different countries of the world because different countries have different shipping costs. But for any of you guys, guys who are watching this video and you're in Australia, in October of 2022, that roughly equated to 487 Australian dollars. Package. Here's how it is. It arrived to me from uh, Vietnam via DHL Express and it took six days, so six calendar days to arrive here, which is pretty All right, so I've just used my carving knife and I haven't opened this yet, so we're looking at this together. So as you can see, it's got some foam padding all around the box to keep the uh, contents nice and safe. So you've got all these parts here. Let's pull them out. Now just like you, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I've got no idea what these parts are for. And so, sure enough, Red Dragon includes the installation video um, on their website. So you can see there's a divider here. So I'm just going to guess that this is relating to one side of the bike, may or may not be. And then, I'm going to pull out these parts. The main thing you just need to be aware of is that you need to get the base version if you've got the front engine cover or the belly pan or the frame sliders. If you've got um, none of those, you can put the pro version on so you can have three mounting points for the Ford Controls kit um, so that you don't have any sort of flex whatsoever. Just noting again though that the people who have bought the base version online, I haven't seen any complaints about it flexing. So I guess if you've got a massive size 13 shoe, foot, whatever, uh, as opposed to a size nine and a half like me, then in that case, um, maybe if you're heavy and you're, and you're pushing on the controls for whatever reason, um, that you may have a slight bit of flex. However, as I said, the nuts and bolts um, are uh, nylon inserted and you should use um, some Loctite when you do the install. And when I do this install, I'll show you exactly how I go about that. So I'm just going to unravel these now and we'll take a closer look. All right, so that was quite an effort to take all that Glad Wrap off. I think uh, that Tristan must have some shares in Glad Wrap, particularly wanting to make sure that these parts arrive to me nice and safe. So that's the main thing. Okay guys, so the first step of the uh, removal is that you need to use a 10 mil spanner to undo the bolt that is here and then you need to undo the bolt that is on the top of the rod here. When you undo those 10 you can then swivel, swivel this in an unlocking fashion and you can pull this rod out. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay so that's the height of the top bolt which I've just undone from here and this one only has about a centimeter of thread that you loosen that up. You can't just keep winding it because it'll run out of thread. But then once you've got those two loose, you'll see here that this is like a spline, kind of like what you'd have for a drive shaft on a car. So it's got teeth in it. So the whole point of that being there um, and locked in place is so that it doesn't slip about. So you can loosen that off. So as you can see, I've just pulled that out. And then when I've done that, you'll notice that the clutch um, bracket, I guess you could say, is now loose. So now what you need to do to take, I'm just going to put my foot underneath there, to take this rod out of this position, you actually just need to start turning it. So it's like you're unloosening a bolt. So you'll see here, it's a little bit hard with one hand, but I am turning, 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 so that I can get this thread of this rod out of that little socket. Okay, so it's just come out. So I'm just going to place that to the side. Okay, so now that it's set aside, you can you can freely let this just um, uh, hang down there. Next step is that you need to get this bracket off. Now I've said in all my videos that I strongly recommend you use a hardened Allen key and you use an impact wrench. The reason for that is because if you use a hand tool, then when you go to undo these bolts, if you strip it, then you've got to spend over an hour likely um, if you don't have the easy out tool to um, get that bolt out you go down to the shop buy an easy out and then waste your time having to take the bolt out 
And if you're doing mods on a bike, it's likely that you're gonna to have to reuse this part or at least sometime in your life again. So this is a King Chrome one, which I've bought from my lo local Bunnings hardware store. It's just got a half inch um, uh, connector so that it fits into my impact wrench. All right, so I've undone those two bolts and then I've simply just pulled this straight out and placed it on the ground. Now, what you need to do is put this on the ground and you actually need to remove this shifter from the bracket and you do that by loosening the allen key here all right guys so that was actually a bit um, harder to remove that bolt than it was to remove those two and they definitely are using lo uh, loctite on this bolt so i strongly recommend that you use an impact wrench to undo that one because it is quite a bit tough when i actually did undo that bolt this washer was actually sitting here on this thread so in the red dragon video they they do not reuse this washer so I'm actually just going to set this washer aside and put it with the spare factory parts. Now this bolt is actually in this position from factory. But here is the Red Dragon shifter and you can see it's not as long. And from factory, Honda has a threaded area here so that if you are going to install a Ford Controls, that's where it goes. So this Ford Control now, uh, this shifter now doesn't get used and you have to put this bolt in here. Now in the Red Dragon video, um, it's the, the they, did, they don't actually show you this, but when this actually gets shipped to you, this is on here tight, but you actually need to loosen this bolt so that you can then thread this part in here um, relatively firmly. See, I've put the blue Loctite on the thread there. I've just loosened that bolt a little bit from the um, black shifter so that now I can um, get this tightened in. I'm gonna tighten it in and then I'm gonna use a spanner on this left side and just a little Allen key on the right side to allow it to have a little bit of play. In the video, they've just got enough play there as if you're simulating that you were changing gear. All right guys, so now that I've got that shifter on, the next thing we're looking at is putting on this extension bracket. So um, this part, uh, again, on the Red Dragon video um, is not uh, perfect. And I've just had to sort of have a think about this and how I'm going to proceed. So what I can see here is that I need to put um, the bracket onto that part there. And then this part needs to go onto the bracket. Now, on the video, it shows that there is a long bolt and a short bolt. So the long bolt here, and then I've got a short bolt here as well. Now in the package, the washers aren't with the bolts, which would probably be a little bit more easier to, to do. But basically, um, what I've then noticed is that when I put that bracket and that ex um, factory part back on, it's going to pretty much end up sitting around here. And so that's why you can't actually use the um, frame sliders if you've got some installed. So before I proceed with this part, I'm just going to remove these frame sliders so that nothing is in the way. Okay, and so just like that, I've removed the frame sliders and it's back to standard. So now when I go to put the bracket and the um, uh, foot controls on, you can see here that it's not going to be fouling anything in that what area. What I've done is I've uh, flipped this over and put it the same orientation as the video. And on the video, you'll see that they use a long bolt there and a shorter bolt there. They've also got a washer there, and I would assume that the washers are used on the opposite side as well. So here we are looking at the way it would go on a bike. I've got the long bolt on the top side, and I've got the short bolt on the bottom. I've simply just put a washer um, underneath the head of both sides. And then when you look at it from the reverse side, I've also put a washer on both sides and then I've put the nylon nut that they include in the kit. Okay so the next step of the video is to put the assembly on the ground like this and it talks about putting in the L bracket thrust bearing and thread lock nut to the long bolt. So I've opened the bag that has these parts in it and as you can see he's put that uh, in first with the flat side to the back so just showing you this part has the groove on the front, the flat side on the back. So put the flat side to the back first. 
Then on the video, you see he puts this one um, with the tiny little bearings on it next. So that's going in next. And then the next part of the video is that he puts a flat washer. So that's the flat washer that is in that pack. So as you can see, um, there is some uh, opportunity for uh, the part to rotate here because um, that washer has the bearings inside of it. And then that washer is accompanied on either side by more flat washers. The grooves of this one here enable the ball bearings on this one to rotate without being worn out. Is that on YouTube, is that you have to put the L bracket on. Now when I got my uh, packet from Red Dragon, these parts were actually assembled to the L bracket already. But just to be sure, make sure that you tighten both that nut and that nut. Because on my one, this one was loose. So I've tightened them, they're both tight. So now the bracket can go on. So it's meant to go this way. And after you've put that L bracket on, then you need to open up the other packet that has the um, washer with the, I think it's thrust bearing. And then you put the other washer on. Just noting that both washers on this side, on that side, have a groove that the bearing is supposed to slot into. Okay, so as you can see, I've just got a little bit of my lithium grease here just on an earbud, and I've just applied it to both sides of the bearings, just a tiny bit, because there was none on there um, from factory. So now um, I can go, can go ahead and um, place that bearing, um, wash that washer shield over the bearing. Then I can put the L bracket. Then I can put another shield there and now I'll apply, apply this grease to this bearing here. Okay, so I've finished f applying the um, grease to the bearings and then you just simply put one of the M8 nylon um, uh, nuts onto this thread. You don't put another um, washer. And when you tighten this bolt down, you do not want to over tighten it because what will happen is you'll crush the bearings and then the bearings will be useless in no time. So I simply just tightened it by hand until it just touched it and then um, I will add it to stop. As you can see, it's got plenty of um, movement and uh, you can see now why there needs to be bearings actually there. Okay, so the next step is that you need to undo the nut and bolt on this end so that it can connect to the shifter. And I checked with Tristan, he said you can connect it to either of these mounting holes, um, but I'm just going to put it on the last one. This looks a little bit different to the video and the instructions in that um, it uh, originally only came with one hole, but they do give you a variation, I guess, that might um, change the amount of space you've got between the shifter and the footrest. Okay, so here's the completed assembly all together. So now we actually just need to mount um, this part back to the frame. And to do that, you're just going to reuse the existing um, two, two bolts that you had from factory. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of Loctite on those again, and then get that mounted and resume. Okay guys, so I've just put the bracket back onto the bike, and I've just gone to have a quick look at if there's any issue with this touching the front engine guard and unfortunately it is rubbing there so that's definitely going to damage that and scratch it out so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, what I'm thinking needs to happen is I need to bring this bracket out a tiny bit but I'm wondering how that's going to affect the operation of um, this rod because it's a spherical bearing down here it shouldn't be too much of an issue so I will undo this bracket and try putting some washers behind the bracket which should bring this out a tiny bit and see if I can uh, fix this issue with the genuine Diablo um, front engine guard um, there is a spacer bracket that goes underneath uh, which is this one and that can't move because it's bolted to an eyelet underneath where the sump is. So yeah, 
This uh, was not expected, but we'll see if we can work around it. All right, guys, so this uh, install is turning out to be a little bit of a custom one. Uh, so for guys that are using genuine Diablo front engine guard, particularly this type, um, the bracket that would normally uh, be inside uh, mounted to the bottom of the engine and used to space out this um, fairing from rubbing against the radiator hose. Um, this is how the bracket sits um, in the bike and this part of the bracket is right at the end of where the fairing is so you can't sort of push that over. Um, so as you can see here just with me going back and forth it uh, um, has put a little mark there um, which I can wipe off with a finger but um, I sat on the bike and I tried changing gears and it wouldn't change gears correctly because of that tiny little bit of a rub. So that's even with two washers inserted here behind a factory bolt location. So the way to, if I, if I push this in as far as it'll go with my hand, now that there's no bracket, uh, or sorry if I use my foot, let me just try and do this. So I've got my foot there and you'll see that uh, uh, when I do that, then there's no fouling whatsoever. So uh, Tristan mentioned that uh, sometimes with these front engine guards, you could try re-drilling the hole that is there. So that is where uh, the bolt goes through for this side. But unfortunately, on the genuine Diablo um, piece, and I hope it shows on the camera properly, um, it's right at the end of the flat part of the fairing. So I can't drill a hole out wider um, because then what would happen is this bracket would need to be bent uh, in order for it to work. And unfortunately, the bracket is uh, long. So basically, it doesn't matter what you do, the fairing is trying to push this way and it's too long. So the only way I can see this actually working is if I cut down this side of the bracket a little bit. So it probably needs to come down to where that wall is or even where the hole is. And then that will enable me to um, yeah, push this fairing in a little bit so that nothing's in the way. Um, just that tiny bit of resistance on the rod there is actually preventing the gear gearbox from being able to change gears. So if you don't have this front engine guard and uh, you've bought the base version uh, for this, this is something that you'll need to look out for. What I will do now is just cut the end of this bracket down um, so that I can get it to work because I want this front engine guard on the bike. It looks I'm going to fit it and using the, putting the bolt right up to this side of the factory hole on the genuine Diablo bracket. But um, it still wasn't enough. It was still fouling the... I guess you'd call it shift the rod. So I've just gone and drilled a six mil hole um, uh, here and I'm gonna try and fit it there. It looks to me like that would be enough space. All right, so I've just uh, tightened that on and as you can see by drilling the hole just um, uh, next to where I had that elongated slot, I'm now moving the shifter and it's not fouling. So that's perfect. Um, so now that means I can go ahead and put that bracket back on and um, as you can see, um, the fairing uh, is not, it's about two mil out from um, where the radiator hose is. So that's still not an issue. All right guys, so I just wanted to just show you the difference between the actual um, forward control kit on the left and the factory position on the right. So yeah, it's um, definitely a huge difference. And at the beginning of the video, I talked about how this is a base version, so it doesn't have a uh, bracket for a third mounting point. But as you can see, I'm shaking this here and it is barely moving whatsoever. So no concerns with installing a base version if you've got a front engine cover installed. So now we're on the right hand side of the bike and to start off the process for installing these parts, we have to remove these two M8 bolts, so I'll use the impact wrench to get those undone and then you're going to need to have on hand a set of pliers. So I've just propped up using the Red Dragon box the uh, right side foot controls so that I can um, use my hand to get in here and pull loose this uh, little connector. Okay, so I was able to get that out and um, 
I am holding a little torch in my hand, but essentially um, that's what it looks like underneath. So the next step is on this uh, brake cylinder, you need to remove this bolt in the middle and the bolt that's on the very left side. Um, so you can undo that with a hand tool and they were pretty hard to get out. I actually found it easy to use my right angle tool. If you only have a handheld tool, tool you'll be able to get it out if you put a ring end spanner under the, the end so that you can get some leverage. The next step of the process is to remove this cotter pin. So you just need to use a um, set of needle nose pliers to um, bend out the ends of the cotter pin and then pull it back out towards the left so that the pin releases from the mechanism. So you can see here I've straightened out that, that cotter pin so now I can just pull the pin to the left and it'll um, break the part free. Just push that bracket out and um, by pulling the bracket through there you go you now oh, where's my phone now you can see that I've pulled that bracket through so it's out so that's enabled the brake cylinder to come apart from um, the bracket itself okay so in order to unwind this part from the cylinder you need to put a 12 mil spanner in like that and then as you've got the 12 mil spanner holding that nut you then can put an allen key in here and you can use that as leverage to break um, it free once you've done that then that enables you to spin off this holder for the cylinder okay, so i've got the bolt and a washer on one side and then i've got the washer and two of the m6 nuts that do not have a nylon insert there the reason for that is because those two nuts actually act as a spacer so what you do now is you fit the brake master cylinder over these two bolts and then you use the two M6 nylon inserted nuts to tighten it all together. So now that I've got the two nylon nuts holding the cylinder on, I can now put the factory bolts on to this Red Dragon. Those two factory bolts now hold the Red Dragon bracket in. The next step is to use these two bolts and nylon nuts to install the factory bracket to the Red Dragon extension bracket. Okay, so now that these two bolts are in, um, you can see you've got factory bolts, Red Dragon bracket, Red Dragon bolts, factory bracket. So it's all moving forward, I guess, 13 and a half centimeters or so. So now we're not, what we're looking to do is we're ex looking to install this extension rod so that the brake cylinder can operate. So you need to get the um, factory bracket part here and screw it onto this extension arm that comes from Red Dragon. So I've just used a 14mm spanner to tighten that nut to this bracket. That's how much um, thread spacing I've left at the end. It's sort of an equal amount on both sides on a, on a top and the bottom here. The next step is that you need to um, connect this to this factory bracket and the way you do that is by putting back in this pin and then the um, cotton pin behind it. Okay so the next step is that yes you have to bring this arm down here back to screw into where the master start the cylinder slave cylinder starts I should say. So um, the end of the slave cylinder, at first I was worried because it seems way off, but there is a tiny bit of flex, but not a lot. So even at full flex, it doesn't meet up where that bolt is. Luckily on the slave cylinder, it actually has uh, what appears to be like a pivot joint inside the cylinder. All right guys, so in this last step, what I found is, is that the brake switch um, needed to be threaded by, by rotating down. So I started turning and it, kills your fingers to do it but yeah it was initially down here in this position and the brake light was just constantly on so I just found that by rotating it this way um, that it got to the point where I'm not sure if you can see it maybe not but um, you can probably see that flashing I've got a um, brake light flasher so the brake the sort of running lights on now now I'm pressing it and now I'm letting it go so it's definitely um, working properly whereas when it was back down here uh, when this threaded collar was sort of in this position 
it was constantly applying the brake, so um, that's not what I wanted. In terms of actually installing this uh, forward control skit, um, the only, probably the hardest thing I would say about the entire install was actually trying to get this extension rod for the brake side to line up with uh, the foot control here with the actual um, slave cylinder. And so uh, it wasn't that hard, but it just took a little bit of adjusting back and forth until it actually worked. I'm about to go and take the bike for a ride now, and um, I can tell you now that just by seating. So here's where, here's what the forward controls look like now installed on both sides. But <clears throat> first thing I notice is that when you go and put your foot down to um, uh, sit on the bike, there's so much more room now, so nothing is in your way. Um, and so when you go and put your feet down, when you go and stop at a red light or stop at an intersection, there's just nothing in your way. So it's just, yeah, a lot better. Um, I was saying before that I like how in the resting position, the foot is well and truly underneath the clutch pedal. Um, so it makes for a much more, I think, comfortable position to be changing upper gear in On particular. the brake side, the brake is very comfortable. Um, so yeah, I've got these aftermarket uh, footrest covers on here and yeah, it feels amazing. So the, the foot and the feeling of the foot um, exactly is exactly the same. The brake pressure is exactly the same. It's just forward. So yeah, quite like that. Um, so yeah, I will take it for a ride um, around a few blocks now and just give it a quick test. But it certainly feels much more relaxed. And uh, yeah, because, I'm, because I've got the drag bars, um, I do just ever so slightly lean forward a bit. Um, but it certainly makes for a much more relaxed seating position um, with the feet forward. Okay, so yeah, let's just get some good footage of it for you guys. So just to recap, reusing the stock bolts. This is the Reg Dragon extension bracket. Here is the here is the OEM bracket. These are the two new bolts that come from Red Dragon. You then got a new actual bracket with the um, clutch rubber on it. Uh, you've got a L-shaped piece or V-shaped piece here which has the extension rod for the clutch side. It's very similar to the brake side except for when I got my package it was um, already assembled. You reuse the OEM <coughs> linkage rod uh, for the gears. It still uses the same spline setup to tighten onto um, disassembly and you have to remember just to make sure that you tighten um, this bolt and <clears throat> sorry this nut and this nut here as well it's got a swivel point here um, for the rod um, adjustment end link really good very minimal movement moving to the brake side again Red Dragon extension bracket, the factory uh, bracket. You're reusing the factory bolts here for this one, and then you're using the bolts here from Red Dragon. We removed the two bolts here for the uh, slave cylinder, and uh, yeah, so basically we, we tightened with the two new bolts from Red Dragon. Again, you've got an extension rod on this side for the brake. You may have to make sure that you tighten up the nuts here, here, and here. You need to make sure that the cotton pin is there and is looped back so that it doesn't fall out. Otherwise, one thing that we did remove at the beginning of the install was a tiny little plastic clip. Because that clip cannot reach back into the OEM position, it does say the instructions that you can just leave it like that. It's not fouling or in the way of anything. So 
that's exactly what I'm going to do. It can't be seen in any way and uh, I don't see any issue with it at all. Here is the full view of the four controls uh, on the right side. Here it is from the front. In terms of forward view, looks pretty awesome. From the back, All right, so I'll take it for a ride now and uh, see what I think. Hey, me. But it feels a lot more comfortable sitting forward. But a brake foot feels very um, easy to connect because it's Okay guys, well I'm home now and I must say that I absolutely loved it. It's got a very free feeling to the bike and um, yeah, just impressed with how one little mod can just totally change the feel of the bike. Um, very relaxed riding position. Um, I can see how it's certainly more comfortable for people with longer legs. I think I put a post out on Facebook and I think the shortest person that came back saying that they had it was around about 150 centimeters tall. So, yeah, overall I'm pretty happy with this uh, modification and I would encourage you to get in contact with Red Dragon if you're looking to purchase one for your bike. Alright guys, hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks very much, hope you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.